This video is an introduction to the Dynon Skyview Touch. Basically, we have a main menu down here, and these all take you to their own separate menus. When you hit the PFD, the pilot's flight display, you have a lot of different uh, things you can do uh, with this particular display. Okay, you can change the bearing pointers, you can change the HSI source, from, that's the GPS, to the NAV 2000, which is your NAV radio, and back. It's got, uh, t it's got room for two NAV radios and there is no second NAV radio, so push it again and you'll get the GPS. Um, so I'm gonna go back. This is the main menu here again. So we'll go to the next one. What's the engine stuff say? All right, so these are the, these are the uh, things we have for engine. Um, there's not much, but there's fuel. You can adjust that. I'm gonna accept it. And there's a clear timer, okay? We're gonna go back and we're at main menu again. Now I'm gonna push map, okay? And now I have map functions and I this is also where you go uh, find your flight plan. Now, if I go back, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna to go to screen, and I'm gonna change the layout of the screen. If I take the map off, I'm gonna go back to the main menu. Notice map is not there anymore. You have to have a map somewhere on the screen to have its menu function. So this that means I have to go to the screen, I have to turn the map back on, I go back to main menu, and now I have the map selector, okay? Um, the next one is the autopilot. Now this airplane has full autopilot controls here and buttons, so you don't need the screen uh, to manage the autopilot, but you can if you want, it's all here. Next one's transponder. You can either push the transponder up here to get to the main menu, to get to the menu with the transponder, or you can push the transponder button. Does pretty much the same thing. Uh, let's see what's under tools, maintenance log, timer, back. We haven't set the maintenance up yet, but hopefully by the time you fly this, we have. Okay, back to the main menu. Now here's how you set up the screens. We're in the main menu and push the screen button and these are toggles on or off and we have three different screens we can use. We have the PFD, we have the um, EMS page, the engine management system, and we have the map page. Okay, right now they're all selected, but I want, I want just the PFD on here and um, we'll have the engines too. So I'm gonna turn off the map page. That's very nice. So I go over here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna hit screen and I'm gonna turn off the PFD and I'm gonna turn off the engine management system so that I only have the map over here. So this is a nice way to fly. You get your PFD engines and your map. But you can set it up any way you want, it's super easy. Now, what if I wanna move um, the engine instruments over here or I wanna make the engine instruments big? Or what if you get in the plane and the things aren't the way, like I want the map over here and I want, want the PFD here. Well, what do I do? Well, I can just push layout. It'll move, start moving things around in all the different combinations. You can swap them. So I just swap this screen with that screen. And swap it back. And another thing about the screens is what if what if what if you want to change the brightness? You gotta push screen and then change the dimmer and then you can increase it or decrease it. Although the auto dimmer works really good. Okay, now let's talk about just the PFD. Um, I want to tell, show you about the settings on that. So I'm going to actually turn off the uh, engine, engine, go back here, and now I'm going to select PFD. And I want to show you a few things here. Mode button, we have, we can set this up. So maybe I don't want to see roads and things like that. I just want the old version of, uh, you know, ground is brown and the sky is blue. Well, that's the Synvision button right there. Synthetic vision is on, it's off. All right, now it's in wide mode, uh, that's straight mode. And another thing is the six pack. You can fly with a six pack. And this is good for private pilots and everybody. So this is the default view, this is what we want. When you leave the airplane, you should set it up like this. I'm gonna put the screen and the engine instruments on and I'll swap it Nope, not swap it, I want layout. And that's the normal way we would fly.
to have the map on too if you want. Okay, let's talk about the nav radio in this airplane. Um, it's pretty basic, but there's something that can really throw you off. If you push this button, it will go to some strange um, mode. But you, if you keep pushing it, then you'll come back with your active frequency and your standby frequency. Push it again, strange modes, push it again, it comes active and standby. So now we can change our standby. Let's just put 16.5, I think that's St. Pete. And now we'll push this button to swap it. So now you're, that's your active um, radio. And if you go over to your uh, PFD, you can uh, select uh, your HSI source to the NAV 2000, which uh, should would be your VOR that you're receiving, except we're not receiving it because we're on the ground. And here's how you change the course. I we're going to use uh, we're going to use this knob for everything. I'm going to push the course button right there. Notice now I can move the course. Now I want to change the heading. We'll push heading, and this turns the heading. I can now change my heading. What if I want to change the uh, altitude that I'm going to? I can push altitude. This changes to altitude, and I can check to set my altitude preselect. Let's say I'm going to 3,500 feet, and I'm going to have the autopilot level off there. Vertical speed by pushing the vertical speed, and now I can set my altitude, my autopilot desired vertical speed in the climb. I can set my indicated airspeed bug. Okay, let's say I want best glide. So there's 67 knots. The other way I can do all this is to push this button, tap it up and I'll change each one, tap it down. And uh, let's just say my altitude and I change my altitude like that. Okay, exit. Much easier to push Course, heading, speed, altitude, vertical speed. That's much better. We also have this panel here, which is uh, what I would use uh, to set my uh, heading, my uh, barometer um, for uh, the uh, person day, like we're at 80 feet above sea level. So I would set my altimeter there. And you can set your altitude pre-select with this knob here. I would get in the habit of using this not this. All right, now let's talk about the autopilot. Uh, it uh, works pretty good in this airplane. I'm very impressed. This little airplane actually has a good autopilot. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna assume you already know how to use autopilot controls. Um, but I would like to point out a few things with this particular autopilot. This level button uh, will straighten the airplane out to straighten level no matter what attitude you're in. Now, if you're in a dive, it'll probably have trouble doing it. But if you're disoriented in the clouds, you push this level button, the plane will go straight and level. And it's also a good way to turn on the autopilot. So I'm gonna push it right now. It's, gonna, it's already turned on. It's trying to uh, level the plane. Seems like it's doing a good job. Um, this tells you what modes you're in. And uh, right now it's uh, set to straight and level. So I'm gonna turn the uh, autopilot on, straight and level, and notice it turns green. To turn the autopilot off, there's two ways. There's a, there's a, there's a uh, button underneath the uh, push talk switch right there, which turns it off. And you can also push the autopilot button. Okay, let's say I wanna edit the flight plan. Well, I can't do it unless the map is up. So I'm gonna push the map. I'm gonna go back and now I'm gonna push the map button and here's my flight plan. So push flight plan and here's our flight plan. And um, now if you wanna do anything weird with the flight plan, like uh, remove waypoints and things like that, you gotta to go to flight plan menu and you'll have all those selections right there. I'm gonna get rid of that. Let's make a flight plan going from uh, let's go to uh, Lakeland and then KTIX. I'll push the cursor. I'll put uh, L, L, A, L, Lakeland, insert. Go to the next one, push the cursor. Now I want to go to K, 
and we'll just type it in here, T-I-X, insert, and add it here, insert. Okay, now I have a play plan going there. And if I wanna put some more waypoints there, I can bring the cursor down here, push the cursor, I can type, let's say I want to just come back here. So X-ray 39, insert, insert. Okay, good. Okay, let's say I don't want Lakeland there anymore. So to, to delete it, I'm gonna push flight plan menu, go down to remove waypoint, okay, and it's gone. To do anything with the mic, let's say I want to insert a waypoint above X-ray 39. So push flight plan menu, insert waypoint, and we will put uh, Lakeland back in, L-A-L, -L. insert, insert, that's it. All right, let's say I want to go direct somewhere. So I push the direct, I got to uh, be in map mode first of all. So um, push map, direct, and I want to go to somewhere other than Brooksville. Let's go to um, Clearwater Air Park. I'm gonna type it in. So K, C, L, W. And then I have to add it to the flight plan. And then I'm gonna put the cursor over uh, Clearwater Air Park and then hit direct again. And it'll take me to Clearwater Air Park. So that should give you a good introduction on the Dynon Skyview Touch uh, system. Uh, sorry, the video was so choppy, but I kind of made it in a hurry. Uh, one more thing I want to tell you about flying this airplane um, uh, with instruments is that uh, it does not have a IFR certified GPS. It cannot fly GPS approaches and you shouldn't use it for uh, cross country navigation. You should use the nav radio, the VORs. It can shoot uh, VORs, uh, ILSs, localizers, back course localizers. Uh, so you can fly at IFR, uh, just realize it's not uh, IFR capable in terms of the GPS. You can use it as a reference. That's about it. And finally, when you're filing flight plans uh, for this aircraft, uh, it is a direct fly ALTO, A-L-T-O. A-L-T-O is the designation. Instead of, like if you fly, fly a Cessna 172, you put C-172. This is A-L-T-O. I checked with the FAA and that's what it is.